Hello and welcome to Demystifying um, Hindu Rituals and Symbols. I'm Nivedita Ganapati and if you're new to this channel, please give, some, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel and press the uh, notification um, uh, icon if you'd like to be notified of all the future videos that I'm planning to share on this topic. So today I would like to talk about the concept of gods in Hinduism. Now, actually uh, uh, speaking, Hinduism, if you go to the metaphysical aspect of Hinduism, there is no God, there is just this infinite uh, consciousness that pervades everything. But that concept is very difficult for the common man to understand and to um, uh, uh, take help of to go through uh, life, the, the vicissitudes of life. So then this uh, uh, infinite consciousness has, which is uh, without any qualities, without any um, name or form, has to be understood by the uh, ordinary man, has to be brought into the realm of thoughts and language and words and imagery. So therein lies, the. Uh, uh, that's how they have created the concept of God. And there is this Trinity, which is associated with the Hindu um, deities, the uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Now these stand for certain principles. Brahma is the creative principle. So it, the G stands for generation, generation of an idea, generation of a person, generation of a universe, and the generation aspect of, of the um, God or universe. And uh, Vishnu stands for that uh, energy that preserves and sustains this idea. So it's the O, the operation of an idea. Once you, G stands for um, generation, O stands for operation, and D stands for dissolution or des destruction. And uh, so Vishnu stands for the generation, uh, sorry, Brahma stands for the uh, generation, uh, generational aspect, the creative aspect of uh, the infinite. Vishnu stands for the energy that preserves and sustains uh, uh, one, that which has been created and Shiva stands for the um, energy that dissolves or destroys it. And before people get uh, jump on me and which is what uh, most people do that how can the universal energy God destroy? It's not a person sitting out there that is trying to destroy anything because this entire world is a mental phenomenon. It's, it's made in your in the mind it's it's uh, uh, with uh, you know it's the principle of mentalism and even if you look at it in the uh, point of uh, from the perspective of your body person uh, people are born they live for a certain uh, number of years and they die and so also with your cells every cell in your body it is it's created it lives for a certain time and it uh, uh, dies so this concept even if you go to the material world corporate world you create an idea you create a company and you sustain it and when it doesn't uh, it's not uh, feasible anymore you shut it down so this concept of to create something you first have to generate it you have to sustain it and then you have to either dissolve it, destroy it, or transcend it to the next, iterate to the next level. And that is the role of the Shiva energy. Now, all of these are principles that are completely, um, uh, cannot work unless there is a certain um, uh, energy behind it. These are the principles and they need energy, which is um, uh, the, the Shakti, which we call. So each of this principle has its own Shakti, so to speak, the one that manifests this energy in our world, in the universe. So then Brahma, is the consort or the energy that goes with the Brahma energy is Saraswati. The consort or the female Shakti that goes with Vishnu is Lakshmi. And the consort or the energy that a female energy, uh, the feminine principle that goes with Shiva is Parvati or Durga, Gauri. So let's understand this a little uh, uh, in detail. Brahma is the creative energy. And how do we create the whole manifest universe was made 
out of speech. In fact, in Hinduism, we call it Nada Brahma or Shabda Brahma. And even in Christianity, they said first there was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Similarly, the Hindus believe that the manifest world was created out of speech, and speech is um, called Vak, Vag, Vach. We call it different names, which is a, another name for uh, Devi Saraswati. So to create anything that is Brahma energy, you need speech and, and uh, sound, so to speak. And the original primordial sound is the sound of Om. And from that sound, all other sounds began. We have the Ahat sound and we have the Anahat sound. The Ahat sound is that which we hear with our physical ears. And the Anahat sound is the unstruck sound that you can hear in your Anahata chakra, in your heart chakra when you go into deep meditation. It is not created by the striking of two energies. It is by itself. It's it's uh, it's called um, uh, that's why it's called the primordial sound, the sound of Om. And Vishnu is the one that maintains and sustains the universe, whatever is created, the, um, that energy of uh, sustenance. And what does it need as its female, uh, feminine um, power? It needs Lakshmi. And Lakshmi is the goddess of abundance. Abundance does not necessarily mean money, although money is part of it. Abundance means everything, all the resources that you need to sustain something that you've created. And the root word for Lakshmi is Laksha. Laksha is goal, having a goal. And uh, um, uh, once you have created something and you have a goal, you will use all your resources at your disposal to maintain this. And finally, Shiva is the uh, energy that destroys it or dissolves something that has outlived its purpose or has become either uh, poisonous or uh, is uh, harmful to us. And what do you need for that kind of energy? You need Durga Parvati, which is of strength to destroy the negative qualities within us. So Brahma as a, uh, Shakti is Saraswati. Vishnu's Shakti is Lakshmi and Shiva's Shakti is uh, Parvati. And um, uh, each of these, if you actually take it a little further, they are represent the three um, aspects of our existence. We have a body, a mind and an intellect. The body is associated with feelings, which is the Brahma. We unconsciously, even if we do nothing, if we never go to uh, learn anything, never go to a school, never go to a university, we would still create. And that is the, <clears throat> that is the unconscious uh, uh, creation that uh, is associated through, uh, that is um, uh, connected to our belief system and what whether we are aware or not, our beliefs are creating our thoughts, which are creating our emotions, feelings. Um, emotions are affecting our feelings, and our feelings are actually manifesting, um, urge, you know, um, determining our actions, which is resulting in manifestation. So, this, if you are unaware, we live at the level of Brahma. We create with our speech, limited negative speech most of the time. Then, you go to the level of, of uh, um, emotions, the mind. Mind is the emotions. This is Vishnu. This is the heart energy, our fee, you know, um, which, uh, which is a seat of our soul. And then finally, the Shiva energy is our intellectual uh, energy, intellect, the thought. So body, mind and intellect, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. And... Um, um, so each of them have their own imagery and their own uh, family and, and uh, symbols and animals associated with them. And we will discuss that uh, in detail next time. But uh, as a takeaway, think about it. You have God, which is the principle of generation, operation and dissolution. Or you can think about it as Brahma, which is the body, the feeling. Um, which is our visceral. We, if we do nothing else, if we have no education, we would still create Vishnu, which is creating with emotion, with feeling, and then Shiva, which is Vishnu is the mind, the emotion, the heart energy, and Shiva is the mental energy, the thought, intellect.
associated with that and um, we will uh, take it uh, further in the next um, video so um, please uh, leave your comments if you have any questions if you'd like me to talk about anything uh, specific and stay tuned for a lot more information that i would love to looking forward to share with you thank you